All right, so we've gone over how you can make a realistic uh, imaginary face using that face template we learned. Now we can take those observations and go back to what we were doing with our reference here. And we kind of mapped it out. Right? Now what we can do is one, one technique of digital painting is called rotoscoping. And that's where you can take your reference as long as you're at a large enough resolution. So now would be a good time to check my image size. And I'm only at 72 pixels per inch, so I'm going to increase my resolution. If I wanted this to be a, a full character kind of painting that could be um, a finished design, I might increase that to 350. Check resample before I do that. And this is basically 11 by 14 by 350. It's going to make my reference a lot blurrier. It's going to make all my sketching lines a little blurrier. But now I'm at a full resolution to be able to print at least around 8 by 10 by 300 pixels per inch one of these head paintings. Now you don't want to make your digital paintings way bigger than they need to be because it will slow down each brush stroke. But I've mapped the face pretty well. Now if I wanted to rotoscope, this is what I do. I layer my reference down. This is a very boring reference, so let me, um, let me bring in a more interesting one. But I've mapped the face. I kind of know the facial proportions. So before I even bring in the new reference, maybe I'll make a duplicate of this, just because I'm doing it all on the computer. And shrink it into the corner. So I have this as reference. I like to have my reference in the upper right hand corner. And a lot of artists will do this. They'll do their digital painting on one half, and then they'll put a lot of reference images and palettes and things over here. Sometimes they do it open in multiple windows, but I'm actually going to have them all open in one just for this demo, because I'm going to go really fast. All right, next I go to some of my reference options. And when I want to do a, an actual study of a face, Especially if I'm going to rotoscope it, I don't want just a front view or a side view. I've got some silly ones here. There we go. But I want more like a three-quarter view. And you'll see how that template can be rotated. So I'm going to bring that in. Doesn't matter if it's large or small. I'm going to make it fit to the space that I want. So I'm going to paint it about that big, let's say. Let me cut it off a bit, rasterize it. Cut around, it's huge shoulders in this. And such vibrant hair, It'd be fun to paint. All right, so that's my reference. On top of that, I put a white layer. I fill a layer with 100% white and then I take it down to about 50%. To onion skin it, right? I have my template here. I want to make sure my template's visible, so I'm going to move that above the onion skin. And I can make that 100%. All right, and now I can start building on a new layer and do a really quick face template of him. So I'm going to use my brush. I'm just using a standard round brush that's pressure sensitive. So in Photoshop, it's like the, the third or fourth brush down. I'm actually going to use the fourth brush, but you can change the hardness. And I'm going to keep it at 100%. Um, I'm going to increase the size because I increased the resolution. I want the size of the brush to basically be the same as I would want a pencil eraser to be. Because when I push really hard, that would fill the whole thing. But when I push lightly, it would barely be anything. Then... I'm going to use, while I have the brush tool selected, I'm going to use the option button on my keyboard to change it to an eyedropper to select new foreground colors. And this way I can find in this pose his cranium, 
Actually, it's a little bit smaller in there. I can see it here. You have to look under the hair. Cranium is a circle, rounds back to that. And then the mandible is a little different. I can't split the cranium in half this way because he's not looking forward. So instead, I find the line through his eyes and through his nose, and that splits his, his head. But because it's turned at a three-quarter view, that line, it's called an action line, is also curved and turned. Same thing with his eye line. His eye line isn't straight across halfway anymore. Instead, it curves around slightly. Like if you drew uh, two lines on an egg. Right. So that's a little bit different than this. Right. Instead, we're turning it so it's like this. And that's a three-quarter view. And that will help you understand the facial proportions a little bit. But the eyes are still in the middle of the head. Okay, then the jaw, the jaw, jaw starts in front of the ear, comes down. The ear fits here. And then the hairline is one, or it's two thirds above the, the middle line there. If you split the top half, the eyes are five across. So that's where the, we expect the eyes to go. Remember, there's one eye width between the eyes, but now one is much, one is much closer to the side than the other. Bless you. His nose is going to fit nicely in that rectangle between the eyes, and the nose is going to be halfway from the eye line to the chin, but you're going to see that curves as well. All right. And then his mouth is going to be different here because he's not having a relaxed expression. Instead, he's pulling his nostrils up. So that makes his mouth kind of bow out like a clothes hanger. And it raises up his mouth line. So that's why I'm going to rotoscope it in like that. All right, and then lastly, his neck, which comes from the bottom of the ears, goes around. Can map the top of his eyebrows, which will be under the brow ridge, which is right there. And then the chin line has been raised up because he's tightened his mouth and really exaggerated his chin in this expression. So let's look at that. This face template, the eyes have just shifted over a little bit. The ear fits between the eye and the nose. The nose is where we expect it to be. But the mouth is not relaxed like this. Instead, it's pulled up. And that gives us more chin. And then the hairline is where we expect it to be. The brow is where we expect it to be. But looking a little bit more at the top of the head, so there's a little bit more hair there. Okay, so now we've mapped it. We understand it. I'll call these my sketch lines for the layer. I can always go back and make sure I've kind of mapped out his skull correctly. But now I'm going to turn that off and build a new layer on top. And this I'm going to call my rotoscoped layer. And this is like I was using a, um, a set of markers. And I'm just going to map in really quickly his big features. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to use a brush, but instead of just the regular hard brush or soft brush, I'm going to customize a brush. So first, over here, doesn't matter what color you use, but I guess I might as well use black to show you. I'm going to make a little bit of a textured brush. Make it a little unique. Because this is your character design. And this is what's fun about digitally sketching and digitally painting. And even if you want a really realistic finish, it all starts with kind of a rough blocking in. So. I'm going to make a little brush like this. Not too complicated, but you see all the empty spaces in it. And it's roughly round, but it's textured. And you can experiment with any kind of brush you want. Now, I am going to select that, copy it, say File New for a new Photoshop file.
Come on. There we go. And when you when you have something on the clipboard, it will be automatically your first option when you open a new Photoshop file. So I'm just going to say create. And then I'm going to paste. Paste in that little brush I designed. It will map it exactly to the edges. Then all I have to do is say edit define brush preset and then give it a name. And I'm going to call this Carl's Trump Brush Test. It's designed at 431 pixels or size, right? But it could be made bigger or smaller. And there it is at the very bottom of my brush options. Okay, but that's not all. Now, if I go back to here, I can use that brush. I just click and I have that brush, right? And I can paint with it, but the problem is it's just going to repeat itself exactly. And it looks like a little fuzzy caterpillar, but it's not, not very interesting. So now I'm going to customize the brush. And you can do this with any, any existing brush, any brush you find. The key is not in designing the brush, it's in customizing it. And to do that, we go to the brush settings. So window, brush settings, right? There's my brush. The first thing I play with, and really usually the only thing I play with, is shape dynamics. Click on that. It's just like doing layer styles. And the first thing I play with is I want to control the size of it through my pen pressure. So it becomes a brush that changes based on how hard I press, you know, small or, or heavy. Then I can set a size jitter, which is really helpful because instead of it being really mechanical where it's perfectly smooth as I push harder, I can make it a little bit more, just give a little bit of slight randomness, a little jitter in its size and watch what happens there. So now the brush becomes like this, which is a little bit more sketchy, more like what I would use. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play with the angle. And that's the angle of this texture. I want it to jitter. I want it to change as I go. So the edges aren't always the same. All right? And now it's more like a charcoal brush. Okay, the other thing I can do is I can play with the roundness. Then this makes it a little bit more like wet media versus dry media where the pixels are super sharp, even though I designed the brush that way. I can give it varied roundness and it will soften edges, right? And then I can limit how thin I want it to get. Okay, next, I might play, if you want to, with scattering. Now, scattering is when you can turn it into kind of an airbrush, where mostly you use it straight, but when you really want to cover ground, you'll let it really widen up. And you can decide how much. I keep this pretty minimal, right? That you can really have it overlap itself. And this is all going to be based on pin pressure because that's what I set under shape dynamics. Everything else depends on what colors you're using and what kind of effects you want. But let's just start here and then just realize what the basic brush settings are. So now I'm using this brush with these settings. Gives me a lot of options. And I'll probably turn scattering off once I've started a little bit. Okay, now I want to select colors just by holding down option. And I'm going to select kind of a shadow color for him. You'll see it there. There you go. And I might paint it over here. This is my palette. And then a highlight for the duotone of his skin, the orange of his hair, the highlight of his hair. I can make a little palette here so it's really easy to select. And then wherever you didn't have a spray tan, you have that, that lighter white. Right. But notice there's